mission. That's right. Safety is always our top mission priority. So let's get into today's launch. This is very exciting as we now have two vehicles in operation, one of which is going to be dedicated to flying payload flights, and that one has flown seven consecutive successful missions. Very nice. And now we have this new vehicle today that's going to be taking its first flight, and this one, this one will be used for astronaut missions. That's awesome. And as we get f closer to flying humans, we, of course, have been building a history of successful missions, proving out the safety of the new Shepard vehicle. Mm -hmm. And now that we're even closer, we're testing out features geared towards the experience for the astronauts inside the capsule. So why don't we take you through some of those features? Here you have our beautiful crew capsule. Today in the capsule, we will have the six seats installed in one of them will be a uh, mannequin Skywalker. He's going up for another flight this morning. And we have speakers now installed in the cabin with a microphone and a push to talk button so each astronaut can talk to mission control. We're flying the crew alert system. It's a panel at each seat with lights and sounds that give the astronauts alerts and important safety messages. Also, there is lining on the wall that you can see, which is nice and soft. So not only when you're floating around weightlessly, of course, but it's also designed to help suppress engine and other ambient noises inside the cabin. There are also environmental systems, including a uh, cooling system and a humidity control to regulate temperatures and also prevent capsule windows from fogging during the flight, as well as we've got a carbon dioxide scrubbing system today. Yeah, and Ariane, we should mention one awesome new addition uh, to this first flight here. Um, as we uh, ascend and launch, about 16 seconds into the flight, we're going to start rotating the booster in the capsule at about two to three degrees per mm -hmm. second, and that's going to rotate the whole stack, um, you know, once every two to three minutes. Now, what that's going to do is for all the astronauts in, in the capsule and Mannequin Skywalker in this case, they're going to be able to get a 360 degree view out of those gorgeous windows, you know, over the that West Texas uh, Valley and that, you know, um, horizon, curved horizon of the Earth. So it's going to be little things like that that are going to make a huge difference for the astronaut experience. Wonderful. So I want to thank our engineers for designing this into the flight profile so that every astronaut is going get to get that great view. So great job, team. Now, let's check in on uh, New Shepard as she gets ready for her 14th flight to space. All right, everybody, welcome back for New Shepard's 14th mission to space. We're coming to you live. Now, Patrick, we've talked quite a bit about the fact that New Shepard isn't only for tourism, but also for research. Mm -hmm. And when we fly humans soon, research will be able to fly, excuse me, scientists will be able to fly with their research. Also, astronauts could use the New Shepard for training to eventually go into orbital space or yep. up to the International Space Station. So our platform allows astronauts to do end-to-end -end mission training, which could include you know, ground crew operations, vehicle operations, and the crew just in general gets good real-world team experience. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it builds upon our payloads program, which has already taken more than 100 payloads to space on previous missions. And as we noted today, Mannequin Skywalker is on board, and he's going to be taking some payloads with him. You want to tell us about that, Patrick? Yeah, absolutely. So today, Mannequin Skywalker, our veteran astronaut right there, will be carrying some postcards in his flight suit from our nonprofit Club for the Future. Now, Mannequin Skywalker, um, on his flight suit, is also going to be wearing a pen from the club's partner, uh, Space Camp, from Huntsville, Alabama. Now, this is going to be the third flight for our uh, Club for the Future, and we have flown, uh, we we're about to fly 50,000 postcards on board this flight. Very exciting. And in total, we've flown more than 100,000 of these postcards to space from students around the world. That's awesome. Have a great flight, Mannequin Skywalker. I, uh, I think we're both pretty jealous that we're not in there with you today. I know. <laughs> all right, Patrick, so we all know here at Blue Origin, we've got this step-by-step -step approach. It's our philosophy that mm -hmm. we live by here at Blue. And while today's flight is focused on another big step towards flying humans, it's also going to continue to prove out technologies and architectures that we'll use on other vehicles. 
And Patrick, I, I believe there actually is some technology on board today that is helping one of the projects that you're working on. Is that right? That's right, Ariane. So I'm part of our advanced development programs team, and we're very thankful for all the progress that New Two, Shepard has made. One. It's a very robust system, and on this mission, we're going to continue to prove it out for human space flight. But knowing that, we're also going to be further demonstrating the flight heritage of that BE-3 engine, and it's a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engine on, on that booster that you see there. Now for our uh, descent element, which is part of the integrated human landing system, uh, that's the you know, lander for uh, NASA's Artemis program, we're using that same vertical landing, vertical takeoff architecture, we're using the same autonomy schemas, and then we're also using the same propellant type for that BE-7 engine there on the bottom of that lander too. Now, if you see right there, that's a BE-7 engine firing at uh, Huntsville, Alabama. That's at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Gorgeous. I love seeing all that smoke and fire come out of that engine, right? Yeah, and if you look closely, I think you can even see some shock diamonds in there. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and that's actually all steam. That's because when you have liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen burning together, it actually produces you know, just steam, which is really you know, super eco-friendly if you're firing these and in the atmosphere. Of course, what we what we see coming out of the, the tail end of New Shepard on her way to space, right? Exactly. Very, very same uh, propellant combination. And so, as we saw on our last flight, we had lunar landing sensors on that one on board the booster, and that allowed us to test precision landing technology for terrain relative navigation and hazard avoidance. And, and as you saw there in that picture-perfect landing, you know, our team got a lot of great data and we're flowing into future New Shepard flights with those sensors, as well as to NASA to advance this sensor technology even further. And so in the future, we can take all that great tech and apply it to our lunar missions. And so with every mission that we do on New Shepard, that's helping propel all the other programs that we have going on. So a good day for New Shepard is actually a great day for our lunar landing system, you know, the, the, the human landing system, NASA's Artemis program, and all of the other programs we have here at Blue Origin. Right, we, we do spend a lot of time thinking about the longer term architecture, mm -hmm. right? They're all connected somehow, so the work kind of spills over into future projects. Well, so on that note, I would like to roll a film that we have here that compiles all the progress that we've made. And when I say we, I mean our national team. We're working together with Lockheed Martin, with Northrop Grumman, and with Draper to go back to the moon with NASA, and this time to stay. The national team is the kind of uh, outstanding leadership, outstanding experience that I like to work with. Blue Origin itself brings innovation and uh, modern thinking uh, to the table. Uh, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman and the Draper all bring an extraordinary experience, not only from Apollo, but before Apollo into the present. We've been developing the BB-7 for several years. Cygnus has been flying resupply missions to the space station. Orion has been in development for a long time. And so these uh, technology uh, demonstrations uh, that have been developed in the context of those programs have already been underway. It's amazing to think that we're only six months into this program and the number of tests we've done on this program compared to anything I've ever worked on before is just mind-boggling. In the base period we've conducted a campaign of 25 specific risk reduction tests in eight technology areas that are fundamental to returning humans to the surface of the moon. We've taken our sensors and flown them on the New Shepard vehicle right to the edge of space as they execute a profile that's going to match the speeds and the altitude that our actual sensors will see as we go down to the moon. The BE-7 testing is happening out at the East Test area uh, at Marshall, um, a place I know very well. Huntsville and Marshall in particular has a lot of capability in helping teams be successful. We're using actual uh, LiDAR sensors to test out docking with uh, already existing software. We have a full-scale model of our vehicle down at the Johnson Space Center where the crew is able to come and interact with that vehicle, test it out, kick the tires. We must have a future for our grandchildren and their grandchildren. We were given a gift, this nearby body called the moon. And it's this generation's job to build that road to space so that the future generations can unleash their creativity. None of this is easy, all of it is hard. Big things start small.
Patrick, it's amazing to see the progress that has been made in, in what is relatively a short amount of time. So kudos to, to your team and you and the whole national team. If you all would like to see more, we did post the full version of that video on Blue Origin's YouTube channel, so go check it out. Okay, we are at T minus 16 minutes and 40 seconds to go until launch. Why don't we take a moment here and check out our rocket as she prepares for her main flight to space. And welcome back, everybody, to our live webcast of New Shepard's 14th flight to space for the system, the first for this rocket. We are certainly looking forward to seeing this launch this morning. But before we get there, let's talk about the incredible work that we're doing down in Huntsville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Now, Huntsville is where we've been developing our BE-7 engines and where our lunar program office is based. Huntsville also was the home of the Saturn rocket, which took Apollo astronauts all the way to the moon and back. So it's fitting that it's also the place where we've decided to put our lunar program mm -hmm. office. We've been growing our presence in Huntsville, and it's also the home to our high-rate engine factory, which just less than a year after it's been open has 145 people in it. Our very own Jackie Cortese was in Huntsville recently and filmed a short tour of the factory, so why don't we take a look? Here we are inside Blue Origin Huntsville. There is a lot happening here at our full rate engine production system. Blue Origin is developing both the BB4 engine and the BB3U here in Huntsville. And this also comes from Blue Origin. Launch Alliance's Vulcan Booster. Welcome to what we call the high bay. It takes a lot to make the BE-4 and the BE-3U engines. A lot of cutting edge technology, top notch machining, and we're gonna see a lot of that here today. So what we have here is one of our laser welding machines, and laser welding is a critical process for both BE-4 and BE-3U. BE-4 is a regeneratively cooled engine, and so these channels are really important to flow that cool liquid through. Inspection is a really important part of the engine production process, and so let's go ahead and take a look in the dive pen. ...is x-ray. We shoot each portion of the weld and we examine the images just like you would have at a medical x-ray. We're looking for defects or anything that is detrimental to the part. The machine shop here in Huntsville is very impressive. There is an entire row of mill machines. The piece will come in, it is loaded into the machine, and it's milled down to the required specifications for that particular component. Last but certainly not least, I'm really excited to show you all the newest addition to Blue Origin Huntsville, a full-scale mock-up of our lunar lander for the Human Landing System program. This lander is powered by the BE-7 engine, which is the newest engine in Blue Origin's propulsion family. NASA's program is named Artemis because Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo, and through the Artemis program, we are looking to land the first woman on the moon. Thanks for joining me for the tour today. I had such a great time showing you all around and I cannot wait to update you on what's next here in Huntsville. Oh, as mentioned, Patrick, we just opened that factory less than a year ago in February. And it's amazing to see just how mm -hmm. fast that factory is coming to life with all the machinery. Uh, it's also very cool that our lunar program is down there in Huntsville, given the rich space history that's in the area. That's right, from chariots for Apollo to landers for Artemis. Right. It's, you know, while we're on the topic of you know, all this great work Huntsville uh, is doing, you know, I'm excited to talk about something I'm especially geeky about, and that's Space Camp, which oh, me is too. also in Huntsville. Me too. <laughs> Quite geeky. So I've always wanted to go Steven, there as a kid. Salut, I haven't been Bientôt le commercial, ouais. T'as vu, il y a le mannequin Skywalker qui est dans la capsule aujourd'hui. 
je commencerai, je pense, à commenter le lancement d'ici euh, 5-6 minutes. Hein, ça ne sert à rien. De... On va laisser les autres parler en attendant. Allez, à tout de suite. So our intrepid field correspondent, Caitlin Dietrich, was on the scene in Huntsville recently, and she got to go on a great tour that she didn't tell us about. I, I don't know how we missed this memo. I think we're going to, there, there are going to be conversations yeah, about this. Exactly. So we're all super jealous of Caitlin. Now let's see what she got to do while she was over there. Hey, everyone. We're at Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama. We're really excited today to talk about our partnership and Club for the Future and get a little tour of Space Camp and pretend to be an astronaut for a day. All right, well, let's get started. This is our Mars base. We've actually got some uh, basil over here. We had some parsley, so we're growing all sorts of stuff. Wow, let's see. On Blue Origin's last launch, NS-13, Club for the Future flew tomato spheres seeds to space. We just planted a few here. Okay. Tomatoes on Mars. Yes. So, love it. So we're going to head over and actually jump into Discovery. We try to do as much hands-on and immersive activities as we can. Houston, we have a problem. Engineering design challenges, the missions and the simulators are of course a huge part of what they do here. So basically this is just going to get the idea of what it feels like to be out of control in like a tumble spin. Do I get astronaut wings after this? That is a cool rocket. Wow. That just never gets old. Whoa. There she is. So we're about to see Saturn V and F1 engines fire on the historic 4670 test stand. And one day soon, you'll see New Glenn's BE4 engines fire on that same stand. All right, so let's check out our human landing system here. We got Lockheed Martin, Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper all working together on an integrated human landing system. And now it's time to go back and build a sustainable presence. Club for the Future's mission is to inspire youth to pursue careers in STEM and help visualize the future of life in space. And so you've been making some cards with the kids and we're able to send them to space and then mail them back to the students. This gives them the opportunity to see that space is about creativity too. And this activity helps drive that point home. You think about the history of Huntsville and it's so fitting for companies like Blue Origin to be here now because it was always about where the future of space is yes. going. There's so many opportunities in, in the world of space flight that these students go, I can do that? Yeah, the work you're doing here to inspire the future generations to pursue STEM, pursue space, I just can't imagine that, you know, Space Camp won't be a big part of our history for many reasons. I wanted to give this to you. Let me, let me pin you here. I love it. All right, it's official. Oh, man, I, I think she definitely deserved her astronaut wings for that one. I'm not quite sure how well I do in that tumble sim. I would not have done well <laughs> at all. Well, uh, thank you, Space Camp, for the uh, the tour, and we really uh, appreciate not only the tour, but also we're very proud to be able to fly a set of your wings on Mannequin Skywalker's flight suit to space today. Okay, we are at T minus 12 minutes. Uh, we are in a hold here. We've said it in previous uh, webcasts. If we need a couple of minutes extra to prepare our launch today, that's quite all right. We spend years designing these vehicles and building them, months preparing for missions. So if we need a couple more minutes, that's quite all right. But while we have a couple minutes here, um, why don't we talk about kind of the broader mission that mm -hmm. we all in the space sector are a part of, and that's inspiring the next generation. Maybe to go into space, but definitely to go into other STEM, uh, STEM areas. So we actually have some questions uh, about space, I believe, from some, uh, from some school students. So why don't we check out one of those questions? Hello, Blue Origin. My name is Alexander Mather from Fairfax County, Virginia. When I first arrived at Space Camp, I had no idea that my life would forever change. I learned that the opportunities in space are as vast as space itself. One of Blue Origin's most well-known creations is the New Shepard, a reusable space rocket. So, how do you make a rocket reusable? I understand the concept, but the way the system works is far beyond me. Help us understand how Blue Origin built the New Shepard reusable launch vehicle. Alors pour tous ceux qui rejoignent le live à cet instant, comme vous pouvez voir sur le chronomètre en haut à droite, 
Le vol est quelque peu retardé pour le moment. Ouais, euh, Steven, il y a un tout petit souci. Bon, ils n'ont pas trop dit ce que c'était, mais ça devrait pas, normalement, ça ne devrait pas causer de problème au lancement aujourd'hui. Sauf que bon, bah voilà, ça va être un petit peu retardé, malheureusement. Euh, on va en savoir plus, bon, bah, dans les minutes à venir. On, on va bien voir, écoute. On va écouter, puis on va voir ce que ça dit. Tu sais, il n'y a que vraiment la NASA qui communique vraiment quand il y a des problèmes. Hein. Tout ce qui est SpaceX, tout ce qui est Blue Origin, euh, etc. Bon, c'est pas, pas vraiment secret défense, mais c'est pas les maîtres de la communication. Quoi. La NASA, eux, ils s'en foutent, mais alors les autres, euh, <rire> voilà quoi. Welcome back, everybody, to New Shepard's 14th mission to space. We are T-minus 12 minutes to go until launch. This rocket that you see on the pad, she is getting ready for her first mission. You see she's looking uh, nice and shiny, mm -hmm. new there. We're going to give her a couple of, uh, of reused rockets char marks, hopefully in a couple of minutes here. That should be exciting. But we are in a hold here. We just want to make sure we give some time to our teams to get aligned. And while we've got a little bit of extra time, why don't we take another question from a student about space? Hello, my name is Kier Fair and I am a sophomore in Lexington, Kentucky. My first experience with Blue Origin occurred three years ago while I was at Kennedy Space Center attending Space Camp. I had no idea that so many companies outside of NASA were involved in space and planet exploration. So the question I have is, what do you hope to gain from establishing human habitats on the moon? Thanks, Kira. Great question. So our vision at Blue Origin is millions of people living and working in space to benefit Earth. And you're right. One of Après, si vous voulez des informations complémentaires euh, par rapport à ce vol, euh, j'ai tout mis en description, j'ai tout traduit en, en français et tout, tout ce que j'ai pu trouver à propos de ce vol est juste en bas, en description, si vous voulez patienter en attendant que le décompte reprenne. We need to understand what it takes to live long term uh, in this, uh, this difficult environment. And so by going to the moon, it's one of the, it's the nearest body where we can go there, establish a base, 
figure out how we can live and work in space because it's it's not easy when you're out there and you don't have any atmosphere and it's cold and you need to figure out how to transport oxygen mais bon, and water honnêtement j'ai peur que si on dépasse le quart d'heure de retard après je sais pas trop mais je pense que ça pue quoi si on so, commence à dépasser un quart d'heure de retard enfin right, voyons voir on va voir on va maiden launch to space and back. All right, everybody, welcome back to New Shepard's 14th mission to space. We're at T-minus 12 minutes ago until launch. Uh, I do understand that the team is dealing with some, uh, some mid-level winds. Uh, as we've talked about in the past, um, it, can get, it can get windy down there in Texas. It looks like a big, beautiful blue day down there in, uh, in Texas, but we do have to monitor the winds mm -hmm. 
for the rocket's ascent and, of course, descent. So we're going to keep our eyes on that for uh, just a couple of minutes here. But while we've got some time, Patrick, you, uh, as mentioned, you are part of our lunar program. Do you want to talk a little bit about your thoughts about why, why are we going back to the moon? Yeah, you know, Kira asked a, you know, a great question, which is, uh, you know, why are we going back and what are people going to do there? And, uh, you know, people are, of course, going to play a tremendous role in, um, in doing all the science, you know, on the moon. There's nothing really like having uh, someone trained as a geologist who can actually go there and actually see what's going on, as right. Jack Schmidt will, will, uh, will tell you. Um, but also, as we look towards the future, you know, we're going to want to use the moon, which is really a gift for Earth. We're going to want to use it to allow us to start, you know, building that future where millions of people are living and working in space. And what it means is we're going to learn how to use um, all of the local resources there. Mm -hmm. So the lunar regolith, the, the uh, uh, water ice that's there, and, and many other things we probably haven't even discovered yet. And so we need people there to help, you know, build all that infrastructure and then slowly start to come back off the surface of the moon and start building all of these great things that we want to have, you know, in space, you know, all, all over between, you know, the Earth and the moon. Right, right. I mean, sure, we went there 50 years ago, but there's so much more to learn. That's uh, right. And especially as technologies have evolved over the last five decades, there's so much more that we can learn. So it's critical that we go back and as this as we said, this time to stay. Yeah, and by the way, we've actually never sent people down to the South Pole. So that's an entirely different part of the moon Good that point. is extremely special that we, you know, we've never been there. And I can, you know, we get so excited about all the great things we're going to, you know, discover there, all the awesome surprises we're going to have. Yeah, that, that will be a very, very good day. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're at T minus 12 minutes. As mentioned, we are uh, still in a hold here, waiting for some mid level winds to clear, and we've got our eyes on that. So we're going to give our team a couple more minutes. And while we've got a couple more minutes, let's see a question from one of the schools out there. Hello, I'm Beth Mattingly, and I'm a third grade teacher at Heritage Elementary School in the Madison City School System. My daughter went to space camp as part of the curriculum in Madison City Schools. Space camp really opened her mind to the what ifs and possibilities of new things. This inspired me even more to bring space related STEM into the classroom. In my classroom, we talk about career opportunities. What kind of careers do you think will exist in space when Blue Origin's visions of millions of people living and working in space to benefit Earth is realized? Thank you, Mrs. Mattingly. That's a, that's a wonderful question. You know, right now, when people think of space, they, they might think, well, you know, it's for engineers and scientists, and it's true. We need a lot of excellent scientists and engineers. But when we're ultimately living and working in space, we're going to need not just the, the engineers to get us there, but we're going to need all of these other people and other careers to help sustain people as we live and work in space. So we're going to need teachers like you, and we're going to need lawyers, we're going to need business people, we're going to need farmers, we're going mm -hmm. to need um, people to make deliveries, we're going to need all sorts of people uh, when we're ultimately living and working in space. What do you think, Patrick? Yeah, I think, um, Iron, you've, you've, you've hit it right on the head. You know, right now we're going up there to, you know, explore or conduct experiments. But at some point, we're going to be up there to live and work. So you can imagine all of the skills that it takes to live and work are going to be required up in space. It's just, you know, you're going to you know, add, so you'll be a space chef or whatever. Right. <laughs> and, um, and eventually, you know, our goal, like we said, is to go to space to benefit Earth. So we're going to want to lift a lot of that heavy industry, you know, off of Earth and actually do it in space. So I imagine, you know, a world in which we're going to have folks up there, uh, you know, working on all of the, you know, really heavy industry, whether it be, you know, generating power or building really highly complex machines, um, you know, all of those um, uh, skills are going to be needed. And we're also going to need the, the filmmakers and the poets and all the people that are going to, you know, look and stare out the window and look back at planet Earth and, and write all the things that are going to inspire us to, you know, keep going out into space. Think about all the, the, the songs and the books <laughs> and the movies that have been created already. Mm -hmm. And that's just with, what, 500 people or so that have ever been to space? Yep. Can you imagine once we've got millions of people living and working in space, the type of inspiration that they're going to have? I can't wait to, to see what, uh, what, what, what is in store for us. So thank you, Mrs. Mattingly. What a wonderful question. I appreciate it. Okay, we are at T minus 12 minutes. Again, we continue to be in a hold here. Let's check out New Shepard on the pad as she gets ready for her 14th mission to space and this rocket's maiden flight.
Eh bien, on est toujours dans l'attente. Hein. Ça fait 20 minutes que le vol, enfin plutôt que le chrono, a, a été stoppé. On va continuer à patienter. J'espère que vous allez bien, sinon, pour ceux qui sont sur le direct ou ceux qui vont regarder la retransmission. On restera quoi qu'il arrive. Hein. Ah, ça y est, le décompte a repris. Donc, H-11 minutes. Thank you everybody for joining us for our 14th New Shepard launch to space. We are at T minus 11 minutes and 30 seconds to go until launch. I understand we have just cleared the hold. Our team is ready to go. So thank you so much for your patience. Let's get ready to launch yeah. this rocket. I'm, I'm super stoked that we're going forward. Okay. We just had a couple of wonderful questions from schools around the country here, and I want to also send some shout outs to some other schools around the country, those that have sent some postcards that are flying on New Shepard today. So we've got Pinnacle Peak Preparatory in Arizona. I want to send a special hello to a star student there. Hi, Abby. In Florida, near our New Glen Rocket Factory, a special thank you to Grove Park Elementary, Andrew Robinson Elementary, and more. And Patrick, these postcards are coming from all around the world. We've got 13 countries so far. And fun fact, uh, today's flight officially completes the seventh out of seven continents. Uh, we have one postmark from a British research station in Antarctica. Isn't that cool? That's quite awesome. Literally. Or cool. Literally. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Um, if you want to send your postcard to space on New Shepard, visit the club's website for directions. Now, why don't we take a quick breather here and check out New Shepard while she gets ready for her flight. All right, that is a live look at New Shepard about to make her final preparations to go to space and back. Patrick, uh, while we have another moment here, why don't you take us through a profile of the flight today? Yeah, that sounds great, Ariane. So many of our viewers, I think, are going to recognize this. We've, we've done this uh, again and again as we keep uh, uh, practicing and maturing our suborbital system. So we're going to start out by launching both the booster and the capsule you know, off of our uh, launch pad. Um, we're going to shoot up quite quickly, and at about uh, two and a half minutes uh, after launch, we're going to shut down. Et re bonjour à tous. Donc, comme vous avez pu le voir, décollage exactement dans 8 minutes et 30 secondes. On espère que ça sera réussi. On rappelle qu'à son bord de la capsule Blue Origin, il y a le mannequin Skywalker, donc qui va pas Anakin, hein, il s'appelle juste Skywalker qui représente en fait voilà un vol habité une simulation de vol habité. I know you would. I keep saying that I'm going to do it one day, I promise you. <laughs> And then um, 
at that point, uh, the booster is going to come back down first because it's more aerodynamically shaped. So it's going to re-enter and then um, uh, it'll start slowing itself down. And then about 3,000 uh, feet above the surface, that BE3 PM engine is going to relight and then gently and very accurately and precisely land that rocket down on the north landing pad. In the meantime, we would get back into our seats um, and strap back in. Uh, the capsule would re-enter, um, and then after, after going through the atmosphere, the drogue chutes are going to open up. They're going to help stabilize the capsule, and then they're going to pull the three main chutes out. We're going to see three great big chutes open, slow down the capsule, and then just before touchdown, we're going to see um, our, our terminal descent system uh, uh, shoot out a puff of air, which is going to kick up a lot of dust, but that puff of air is going to you know, allow a pillow soft landing for Mannequin and our future astronauts. Wonderful. One to two miles an hour, right? Super soft. Should be another beautiful launch and landing today. Well, I do want, while we have a, an extra minute here, I do want to talk a little bit about the launch, launch site one, West mm -hmm. Texas. We've talked about this before. It's not only where we launch and land New Shepard, as you were just talking mm -hmm. about, but it's also where we test our rocket engines. And I want to cut to a clip, fresh, hot, you know, fresh out, hot the oven <laughs> clip of our BE4 engine test from earlier this week that we've prepared for you. This is our BE4 engine, 550,000 pounds of thrust. That's in comparison to 110,000 pounds of thrust on the BE3 engine that's flying mm -hmm. today. Uh, we also, uh, it's, it's uh, LOX LNG, so mm -hmm. it's a different propellant. And here you see, it firing, this is one of our two test stands that's down in West Texas. There's some drone footage that we compiled for you. That thing creates quite the rumble down <laughs> in the valley in Texas. And ultimately, on uh, it, this is going to propel uh, United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket as well as our new Glenn mm -hmm. vehicle. There will be seven of these engines on the base of New Glenn. And that is going to create a rumble down in Florida when we launch New Glenn. So, Kudos to our engine team for the progress mm -hmm. on this groundbreaking engine. Yeah. Okay, we are at T minus five minutes and 50 seconds to go until launch. We're getting really close here. So let's do a quick recap. Allez, on est bientôt à 5 minutes du décompte. Vous avez pu apercevoir les tests au sol. Il fait beau aux états unis On espère que le vol sera réussi. On espère que tout se passera bien. C'est l'avenir du vol touristique quand même qui se joue lors de ces essais. There will be environmental systems, including a cooling system and humidity controls to regulate the temperature uh, inside the capsule. But in particular, that's also going to prevent these big, beautiful windows from fogging up during the flight. We're also testing a crew uh, alert system at each seat, which is, has important indicators to take you through the entire flight as an astronaut. And last but not least, you've seen in there the, the white acoustic paneling in there. That's to dampen any engine noises or any sorts of uh, other ambient noises. So in the final moments here, uh, all eyes are on New Shepard. We're at T minus four minutes and 40 seconds to go until launch. Right about now is when she's going to start to come alive. So mission control mm -hmm. at T minus two minutes. Allez, on est à 4 minutes et 20 secondes du décollage. On rappelle pour ceux qui viennent d'arriver qu'à son bord, il y a le mannequin Skywalker, qui représente un habitant, un, voilà, enfin, un, habitant, un passager, hein, des futurs vols touristiques. The next set that we'll come back for to talk you through are the final hydraulic system checks and the engine. Allez, on est à 4 minutes. Vous pouvez observer cette peine une fois, franchement, elle est magnifique. Cette magnifique. Oh On a un petit don de la part d'Ed Zekard. Et bah écoute, merci beaucoup. Euh... Merci beaucoup, Steven. C'est très sympa. Oui, oui, elle va décoller. Tiens, H-3 euh, minutes 40. Donc on rappelle, hein, elle va pas, elle va pas aller dans l'espace, espace. espace hein. Enfin, elle va, elle va décoller, tout va réatterrir. Hein. Bon, la réutilisation, bien sûr. Jusqu'à ce que la capsule... Euh, enfin voilà, on va tout récupérer ce soir. Il hein, n'y a rien qui reste en orbite. Je suis leur connu au gouvernement en même temps. Oui, ça... 
Enfin, voilà, là on est aux états unis euh, on est avec euh, notre petit mannequin, on espère qu'il va revenir en un seul morceau. Hein. On est à 3 minutes, 3 petites minutes euh, du lancement. Allez, on espère qu'on n'aura pas d'autres retard, on a quand même eu 20 minutes de retard. Et bah voilà, j'ai parlé trop tôt. Euh, le décompte est arrêté. Euh, un nouveau petit problème vient de surgir. Bon, bah, on espère que c'est pas grand chose. On est à H-3 minutes. Mais euh, le chrono est stoppé. Malheureusement, j'ai parlé trop vite. <rire> euh, la New Shepard. Euh, oula, alors là, tu me poses une colle. Je vais essayer de te trouver la réponse euh, pendant le. Oh. Euh, donc alors attends. Pendant que ouais. Euh, ah le décompte. Euh, 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 Écoute, pour, euh, je suis en train de chercher des infos sur euh, cette New Shepard. Pour l'instant, j'ai pas d'informations. Ah, ça y est, le décompte a repris. Excusez-moi. Le décompte a repris. Donc, on est à H-2 minutes. H-2 minutes du lancement. Écoute, j'ai pas d'informations. Tandis que, ah, je sais pas si vous entendez, on entend la, la sonnerie, enfin, l'alerte. Et ainsi que. Le lance voilà. La structure qui se recule. Ah oui, bah, c'est pas sa première right. utilisation. Hein, c'est un peu le but. Hein. Allez, on est à H-1 minute 40. Oui, oui, elle a déjà été réutilisée. Mais je crois que son dernier vol, si je me trompe pas de mémoire, hein, je peux me tromper pour les jours, je crois que son dernier vol, c'était le 11 décembre. Quelque chose comme ça. Si je me souviens bien. Je, je suis pas sûr de mon coup, mais je... D'après ce que je me souviens, elle a volé en décembre. Vous pouvez voir les ailerons là. Qui, euh... Hop, ça juste. Allez, on est à 1 minute et 10 secondes, et bien entendu. Euh, à H-30 secondes, je couperai mon micro et je vous laisserai apprécier le décollage. Allez, on espère que tout se passera bien. L'objectif, c'est bien sûr la récupération du lanceur et la récupération en bon état de la capsule avec à son bord le mannequin Skywalker. Petit clin d'œil à Star Wars. Allez, je vais couper le son d'ici 10 secondes et je vous souhaite à tous un bon décollage. Montez le son et rendez-vous dans les étoiles. Control. Here we go, New Shepard. Have a great flight, Mannequin Skywalker. Enjoy that shiny new capsule, and we'll see you back home soon at launch site one. T minus 16, guidance internal. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. 2, 1. Et c'est le décollage de la New Shepard. Un décollage parfait pour le moment. Et vous pouvez voir en, bah, en, dire, en haut, vous pouvez voir à gauche donc, toutes les étapes. Donc euh, que ce soit Max Q, la séparation et l'apogée, hein, l'apogée ce sera ça, on va dire son altitude maximale. Euh, je, je pense pas Steven qu'elle va aller jusqu'à je pense pas qu'elle va aller jusqu'à 100 km le but c'est vraiment d'aller jusqu'à la stratosphère enfin, on va écouter on peut apprécier elle arrive dans la zone de Max Q ça y est, elle y est on rappelle que c'est la zone la plus sensible hein, des perturbations elle la passe sans problème voilà, comme vous pouvez entendre, excellent, donc tout s'est bien passé pour le moment. Allez, la montée qui devrait durer euh, bien sûr quelques minutes. 
All right, you can see on the top right side of your screen, that's where you can follow along as we're gaining speed. Je trouve ça étonnant qu'ils nous montrent pas des caméras embarquées. Bon, je sais pas s'il y a des caméras embarquées. Je pense quand même qu'il doit y avoir des GoPro sur sur la New Shepard. Ça serait bien qu'ils nous montrent un peu des nudes. Above mean sea level, that's Allez. the altitude uh, of our West Texas launch site. Alors, le moment de la séparation, ça sera bien sûr le lanceur qui va se séparer justement de la fameuse capsule. Ouais, mais les images ne sont pas publiques. Sûrement. C'est probable. C'est probable. Allez, on arrive bientôt au point méco. Ah, C'est de plus en plus... <rire> ah oui, plus ça va loin, plus la caméra, elle bouge. Hein. <rire> ouais, ouais t'as raison, Steven. Plus de 100 km, ouais. Allez, allez. On a passé Meko. Ouais, sérieux, ils auraient pu faire des efforts quand même pour les images. Déjà, on, pourra, on aura en, en gros plan, en tout cas, euh, le retour du, du lanceur. Allez, la séparation, malheureusement, on ne peut pas voir plus. On voit quand même deux parties qui se sont séparées. Donc, ça a l'air de bien se passer, en tout cas, pour le moment. Allez, on est bientôt à mi-chemin de l'apogée. On voit bien les deux parties qui se sont séparées en tout cas, donc à ce niveau-là tout se passe bien. Le caméraman qui a du mal. Attention, on va bientôt arriver à l'apogée. Ça y est, on y est. J'entends le banc sonique. Ça y est, on a atteint l'apogée. On va assister. Donc pas longtemps au retour de la capsule, au retour du lanceur. C'est là que tout se joue, hein, bien sûr. Hein. Le but, c'est pas forcément d'envoyer. En, On sait envoyer quelque chose dans l'espace. C'est bien sûr euh, le retour du lanceur et le retour en bon état, surtout de la capsule. Faut pas, faut pas oublier qu'il y aura des touristes hein, dans cette capsule plus tard. Donc c'est vraiment important de la récupérer en très bon état. That is excellent. A great flight. Alors que sur euh, la courbe, enfin la courbe, à gauche, vous pouvez voir notamment la descente euh, du vaisseau. Now the capsule should be continuing to do its slow spin. Everybody gets a window seat in the capsule of New Shepard, but now we're making sure everybody gets the perfect view. Alors, Back to its landing pad again, two miles north of where it's taken off from. We have confirmation that the wedge fins have been deployed. Those fins are at the forward section, the top section of the rocket. They're housed in the ring fin. Allez, on va bientôt They also help provide retour. stability for the rocket as it comes into Allez, land. On va commencer à avoir des images un peu potables. Pour le coup. Allez. Ça y est, on commence à voir le lanceur. On commence à voir le lanceur, on va assister is, à son retour au sol. Normalement, right il devrait atterrir is, sur une... Comme, son, bah, comme un peu comme SpaceX, hein, avec le X, mais là, avec une plume. Normalement, 
Allez, le New Shepard, le lanceur qui revient sur la terre. So we're looking now for the drag brakes to deploy. As soon as those deploy, you'll see the speed come down oui, very rapidly. You're starting to see that in the top right corner there. Allez. Le lanceur qui va bientôt And then in quick succession, we're going to get the VE3 engine morceau. to restart. The landing gear will deploy and then the booster will come in for a nice chip. soft touchdown. Ce serait dommage. There are the drag brakes. On voit que les propulseurs sont toujours éteints. Les moteurs vont pas tarder à se rallumer. Ça y est, elle se met droite. Allez. Ça y est, les moteurs sont allumés. C'est le retour. Engine de la nous Shepard. Et pour le moment, tout se passe bien. Le lanceur est de retour parfaitement. Et elle s'est atterrie, bon pas exactement au plein milieu, mais le lanceur a atterri sur la cible. Oh, Did a nice little maneuver there to bring it back back to the center of the pad, but that is what we're looking for. A ta completely autonomous system. Voilà, comme vous pouvez l'entendre, première mission réussie euh, en ce qui concerne Blue Origin. Et vous pouvez regarder à gauche la capsule qui va, elle aussi, bientôt faire son retour. Incredible, incredible. Kudos to our whole team for adding yet another rocket to our fleet. Wow, ok, well, the show is not over. That's right. We still uh, are waiting here for the crew Allez, on attend le retour de la capsule avec le mannequin noted, à l'intérieur. C'est vraiment là le plus important. Il ne faut pas oublier qu'il y aura des touristes à leur place. The uh, mains will then deploy. You'll also see the mains then uh, inflate. Pour ceux qui voudront regarder la rediffusion de ce lancement, une fois le, le live terminé, je remettrai un time code jusqu'à H-30 secondes, d'accord Pour pas que vous ayez à vous refaire toute la demi-heure avant le lancement. And just as we talked about, just in the last milliseconds, the retro thrust system fires and, and it creates a nice pillow, air, air pillow, if you will. So Mannequin Skywalker, by the time he touches down, it's just at about one mile an hour. It's a nice soft Et on la voit, la capsule, elle est de retour. And there we avec go. Les trois parachutes qui se sont the bien crew ouverts. capsule has its la mains deployed, avec notre fully inflated. Est de retour. What an incredible day for the team. Douceur, par contre. Allez, on va assister à ça tout de suite. J'adore les parachutes. <rire> Rien à voir, mais j'adore les parachutes. Ils sont trop beaux. Ça change des blancs de la NASA. Allez, le retour de la capsule. What a beautiful que ça shot. Soit you know, Mannequin Skywalker. Hein. I mean, if he had adrenaline, his heart would be would be thumping pretty hard. What bah, écoutez, a day. On All the way up over the corner Les conclusions line de de Blue Origin, mais je pense qu'en tout cas, c'est un vol réussi, un vol test réussi. Just about 400 feet above ground level, we're waiting for the retro thrust system to fire. Allez, la capsule est de retour. And then a nice soft landing. Attention. Voyons voir le choc. Ouf, en oh, douceur, ça encore. C'est pas encore And ça, touchdown. mais en tout cas, elle est de retour. Il faudra peut-être prévoir des airbags, What des coussins d'air pour les, pour les riches milliardaires shot. qui feront ce voyage. Les pauvres. Congratulations to all Je veux bien récupérer un parachute par contre, pour, really mon, pour mon décor. Well This is our Allez, la capsule est de retour, la New Shepard également a fait son retour. Tout s'est bien passé. Et comme elle le dit, euh, un spectacle merveilleux, un spectacle fabuleux. Ouais, effectivement, c'était un très très beau lancement. 
Get your ah ouais, de quoi piquer, ça c'est sûr. <rire> voilà, et comme vous pouvez le voir à l'écran, c'est une mission réussie, succès, mission. Je veux bien le parachute. <rire> J'adore. Voilà, en tout cas, c'est un vol réussi. Donc je rappelle que je mettrai un timecode pour la rediff pour ceux qui voudront revoir ce lancement. Je vous remercie, on va rester encore un petit peu ensemble, hein, mais je vous remercie déjà d'avoir assisté à tout ça. C'est la première fois qu'on qu diffusait un lancement de Blue Origin et franchement j'ai bien aimé. J'ai bien aimé la New Shepard, ça change un peu des Falcon 9. Pay, après. Ah bah tu Mais je crois de souvenir c'est pas particulièrement cher. Hein. Enfin, pour ce que c'est, ça reste cher. Mais je crois qu'on tournait dans les 20 000 dollars. Je crois, hein. j'ai pas envie de dire de bêtises, mais après comme ça, quoi, juste pour euh, faire ce petit voyage. J'ai envie de dire, bon, ça reste un bon billet quand même. Mais bon, ça doit valoir le coup. 50 000. Ouais, ouais ça pique. Pour, euh, je crois 2-3 minutes, quelque chose comme ça. Enfin bref, c'est toujours plus accessible que d'aller dans l'ISS en tout cas. Allez, il vous remonte un coup euh, la rediff du décollage. C'est super beau. En tout cas, mission réussie pour Jeff Bezos et son entreprise Blue Origin dans ce test de la New Shepard. Patrick, Yeah, and as we said earlier, today is is a huge win, not just for New Shepard, but also for our human landing system and, and, and our return to the moon. That BE3 engine that you see right there, that's a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen uh, propellant combination. And that's that's the same combination that we use on BE7, ouais, our lunar allez, lander bon, engine. And you can just, bah, I mean, right Steven, there, you can see bientôt, that power you know, when it launches, and you can see that precision when it lands too, right? When you throttle it down, you get that nice precision landing. Nice soft landing. Bonne soirée à ceux qui quittent le live. Et puis, bah, if we were just bonne continuation à ceux qui restent. Et puis, si nous avions juste construit cette mission, nous aurions probablement choisi un type différent de propellant, quelque chose de plus facile à faire. To deal to work with, but this combination is just so powerful and so efficient and so useful. You know, we've we use en it on the upper stage of the new plan again in order to get that uh, efficiency, and, and that's that's why we're also using it on the BE7 engine that will power that descent element for the human landing system for NASA's you know Artemis program. And you know, as we all know, there's water ice in the South Pole on the moon, so I imagine one day here in a very near future when we have built out our, our South Pole infrastructure on the moon, we're going to be able to use that water, break it down to liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, refuel our lander and use it again and again. I mean, that's going to go such a long way to make our sustainable presence on the moon. Absolutely. I, I can't wait to see the lunar lander and then the lunar lander with humans on yes. board, right? Every program Et la capsule a l'air en bon état en tout cas, ça c'est bon signe. Et pour today's mission, comme we mentioned, nous avons flu some upgrades to the astronaut experience inside this capsule that you see on the screen. So we're getting really close to flying humans, we're getting there. And as we watch the, the recovery team, why don't we run through some of the upgrades that we had on board today? So the capsule that you see there, there were six flight seats on board. Mannequin Skywalker, of course, was in one of them. On voit the speakers in the Skywalker cabin uh, have a, a microphone now and a push-to-talk button at each seat so the astronauts can talk to mission control on the ground at all times. We flew the crew alert system, which has a panel on each seat with lights and sounds that convey important safety messages. The wall linings in the capsule help suppress engine and ambient noise for oh. comfortable acoustics inside the cabin. Mm -hmm. Also, environmental systems, including a cooling system and humidity controls to regulate temperatures and prevent uh, the, the capsule, windows, capsule windows from fogging up during flight. Of course, when you're up there, you want to see that gorgeous yeah. view. So some really exciting stuff. You see there on your screen there, that's our recovery team that has made it out to the capsule. As we mentioned, they're going to open up the hatch, 
Et on a Ikan qui nous a rejoint pour cette fin de live. Ça va, Ikan alors, nous, je sais pas, on va bouger. Salut, Cam, comment ça va Ouais. Ouais, bah, j'avais pas vu, hein, tu sais, Discord, tout ça. T'as regardé un peu And you know, if you were inspired, uh, just like, like we were super inspired, inspired by what you saw here today, and, and, and want to come help us you know, build that road to space, you know, we're we're hiring across all of our <laughs> in, locations in, in the United States. We're hiring for New Shepard, for New Berlin, ah, for engines, and of course for advanced development ouais, programs, for human landing system. So I encourage everybody to go onto our website and actually go and check those listings out. Yeah. Bon bah du coup tiens on va arriver à la fin du live Ouais bah du coup on va rester avec les gens pour gagner un moment Puis on va aller à la prochaine hein, pour les autres Ouais bah exactement Ça c'est les futurs vols touristiques tu vois là Un gars comme toi et moi on pourra rentrer dedans Ouais bah ouais c'est ce que j'ai vu En plus là ils envoient des cartes postales Ah c'est pour les autres Ouais j'ai vu bah j'ai vu une petite vidéo où il y a des enfants Ouais c'est tout pour les autres From here, I want to thank everybody for tuning in for New Shepard's 14th flight to space. The success of this flight puts us one really big step closer to flying astronauts. Patrick, there's going to be a lot of fun ahead in 2021. Awesome. All right, guys, stay in touch with us, and in the interim, stay safe out there. And as always, Gradam Ferocitor. J'avoue par contre elle a de la gueule hein, avec la plume, et la, voilà, la fusée, le live est terminé, donc on va écouter, on va vous dire au revoir à tous, et puis on vous dit à la prochaine pour le coup. Allez, je vous laisse avec la petite intro de fin, et puis à bientôt